Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, I hope you're excited about today's applique. Today we're doing the Sunbonnet Sue. We're going to spruce her up in an autumn theme, but just know that you could use this applique in so many different ways. She is so classic and traditional. You could just do her by herself without the leaves. You could throw in a candy cane and make her a Christmas themed. There, you could throw in some Easter eggs or an Easter basket and make her Easter. There's just so many different things you can do with Sunbonnet Sue. I think that's why so many people love her. She's just so classic and cute, isn't she? So today, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. I'm going to do mine as a raw edge applique. If you prefer turned edge applique, there are about a hundred different ways that you could turn this raw edge applique into a turned edge applique. Search up on all the different ways on YouTube. I have a couple of different videos where I do turned edge applique as well. But yeah, there's lots of great teachers here on YouTube uh, if you would rather do it a turned edge applique. Their tracing PDF templates are down in the description box and they are free until November through November the 2nd. Friday, November the 3rd, they're getting combined with the cutting files that are already in my Etsy shop. So if you have a cutting machine like a Cricut Silhouette or a Scan and Cut, uh, and you want to cut out these pieces using your cutting machine, that link is down in the description box too. So before we get started, I always like to show an example of a project created with this applique. So let me pull up just a small little table topper made with four 12 inch blocks. They finish at 12 inch, right? You cut them at 12 and a half by 12 and a half. Isn't that cute? This would make the perfect little table topper, don't you think? Isn't she adorable? Sunbonnet Sue, four blocks with a simple one inch sashing between your blocks and a border with cornerstones. That's all you'd need to do to make this into a table topper. Imagine a whole quilt made with this block. Now stay tuned for next week. Y'all, next week we're going to do kind of a classic as well with a twist, okay? So let me pull up the applique that we're doing next Friday. And if you haven't already subscribed and hit the bell notification, you might want to do that so you get notified. And you can grab these tracing templates while they're free, right? So next week, we are doing a Dresden wreath. Reef, wreath. <laughs> a Dresden, isn't that cute? It's got the scalloped curved edges. They're sort of overlapping. I did a little bit of a twist on this and we are not piecing of this Dresden. We are doing raw edge applique with this Dresden and it's going to be a lot of fun. If you love making the Dresden, uh, Dresden plates, right? All different kinds of ways you can finish those with the pointy little edges, scalloped edges, pointy and scalloped curved edges, uh, all kinds of variations. This one kind of looks like a wreath, but we're not sewing together the pieces. Uh, as much as I love making a Dresden plate, they're a little bit time consuming, aren't they? And y'all know that raw edge applique is my jam, right? It's my thing <laughs> and I love it. And uh, it certainly speeds up the process. And that's what we're doing with this Dresden wreath. <laughs> I'm always saying things wrong. Y'all know that about me. So, uh, what I've been trying to do in this series is to get you to fall in love with applique as much as I love it, or at least half as much as I love it, right? And uh, although a lot of the times I show you making the applique into a quilt block, I've also been trying to uh, give you some ideas of what you could do with this applique other than putting it in a quilt because we all like to sew. There goes the bird. I'm going to pause here in a second and go give him a box. That seemed to work last week, <laughs> but I don't want to lose my train of thought. Even though we all love to make quilts, sometimes we might want to sew these appliques onto other projects, right? So Harlan came back from Vermont over the weekend and he brought some hand towels, some fall themed hand towels that his aunt had given him. Aren't they pretty? We've got a plaid one. We've got one with leaves. Isn't that fitting for this block or this applique? 
and a couple of blank ones. And I thought, let's put this Sunbonnet Sue on one of these blank ones. And uh, I think that would be perfect, right? And these will be perfect in my kitchen and in my pantry throughout the fall months, right? I'm excited to do it and I'm gonna bring you along. I'm gonna pause the video before we move down to the cutting mat. I'm gonna go give Poppy a box. I've saved one for him, special for today. Maybe it'll quiet him down and I'll be able to focus on what we're doing. Okay, y'all, I gave him a box and uh, I put some peanuts and some toys in the box for him so he will discover those treats as he tears apart the box and maybe that will keep him busy as we're recording the thing is he can hear me even with my door closed and he hears me talking he thinks i'm having a conversation without him but hopefully that box will keep him busy and he can have some treats so here's my towel uh, the set came with two of these burnt orange towels and i thought let's use one of them to put the applique on right and before we get started we're going to talk about uh, stabilizer. Uh, this is a pretty thick hand towel. I'm not really sure if I'm going to need a stabilizer or not. It's really going to depend on the type of stitch that I choose to sew down my applique. Uh, I know a lot of you have embroidery machines and you use either a cutaway or a tearaway stabilizer. Uh, if I were doing a very dense satin stitch, I most certainly would consider uh, a cutaway or a tearaway stabilizer um, but I haven't decided what stitch I'm going to use yet so let's revisit that okay so what I'm going to do is turn on my iron and get that heating up here are the templates for this week there's two pages and all of these have been mirror imaged so you're ready to start tracing with your fusible right not too many pieces. I think there's 12 altogether for this applique. She's a good size, but you could reduce the size of this applique or enlarge it depending on how big of a project you're doing, right? All in your print settings. And if you have the cutting file, it's really easy to select everything and resize it right in your cutting machine software, right? Here is the placement guide. So we're gonna bring that over. And I'm going to bring over my silicone mat because we're going to fuse all of these pieces and make her into one applique, which will include this leaf, leaf number two, but these are just off in the distance and so we'll place those on the towel itself. But all of these pieces we're going to fuse and make one applique. So here's all of my pieces, and I did use my scan and cut to cut them out, so that was uh, fairly easy, right? I have my leaves here, and these two leaves are going to get placed off to the side. So we have our leaf. Let's go ahead and just put that down because we know we want that underneath of her little hand, right? So that's going to be on the bottom. And then we have her hand. Let's go ahead and put that there because the sleeve of her dress is gonna cover up her hand. The other hand we can set off to the side for a second. We have her dress. Well, first let's put her shoe down because the shoe is gonna go underneath of her dress. So the shoe is gonna go right there. And then let's bring in this sleeve because that's going to go underneath of her dress like that. Isn't that going to be so cute, right? Now let's bring in the dress. I moved that shoe just a tiny bit. There we go. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit these pieces so they don't move. Just a quick little bop with the heat. <laughs> and that's just going to pre-fuse everything together and stop all the shifting and moving around, right? So then we have 
uh, her little apron. And that's going to come over just like that. That's super cute. I'm going to hit that with a little bit of heat. And then her bonnet is going to come right on top. Like that, isn't that just adorable? <laughs> she reminds me a lot of Holly Hobby. All right, in this arm, you can put in any direction, right? But I'm gonna have her like she's blowing a leaf, right? And so she's kind of like standing a little bit like that. And this hand tucks up under that sleeve. Let's go ahead and just fuse those pieces. And then the little band on the bonnet. Isn't that just adorable? I thought these fabrics looked very vintage <laughs> and actually this green fabric probably is vintage. The green was actually my great aunt Avis's fabric. So that probably is vintage. The rest of these fabrics just look vintage. All right. I think that's very well bonded. And so we're just going to let this cool off for a second. And we're going to scoot that off to the side and we're done with our placement guide. So let's bring this hand towel back in because I know with it folded up like this, uh, it's going to be too narrow for her to fit. So let's just play with the placement. So that's the back of the towel. Let's just give this a little press because it's got some really hard creases from being folded at the store. But it also kind of gives me a center placement, doesn't it? There we go. So let's see if that's cooled off enough for me to just raise everything up. And we can just bring that right onto our towel. Isn't that just adorable? <laughs> she is so cute. Now, I know that when I hang this towel, I probably will fold in those edges. What do you think? I didn't pre-think this through. <laughs> Let me get her fused on and then I'll play with the other two leaves. I'm almost thinking she needs to come over like this. Yes. Let's put her off center just a little bit like that. And we're fusing it down. We're committing. <laughs> There's no going back now. Except for the fact that I have two more towels I could do this with if I messed up. <laughs> we're fusing it down though. She is just so cute. So I know that if I were to fold back the edges just a little bit, right? Like she's hanging up like this. You know how the oven has a little bar? 
that you can hang towels on. I kind of like to fold in the edges and hang it so something like this, right? So let's play with the placement of these leaves. I kind of like that. That's super cute. So let's just do that. Let me take this back down like that and I'll fuse these two leaves right in place. Now, an advantage to the cutaway is that it stays behind your, uh, your work, right? And really supports all of the stitches and it supports the fibers of what you have stitched on through using and washing uh, and drying and all those things, right? It supports everything through the use and through the years. Uh, a tear away, and so a cutaway would remain behind the towel, right? If you looked, if you lifted up the towel, uh, and you looked, you would see the cutaway back there. And a lot of the times you just trim away all of the extra. So it would kind of um, mimic the look of the applique, except it would all be white or whatever cu color cutaway you use, right? But it stays in and it does soften up with use and with washing, right? But it stays back there. A tear away would support your work while you are stitching. And uh, once you're done stitching, you'd remove everything. So the stabilizer is there to support your towel or your fabric and your stitches to keep everything nice and firm. Uh, a lot of times if you're stitching on something like this and you're getting skipped stitches or um, your stitch quality is different or your thread is breaking, more than likely, if you were to throw a piece of cutaway or tear away underneath of your work, it would fix a lot of those issues. I think because this towel is, uh, even though it's not really stretchy, it's really flimsy. So I think for this towel, let's use, let's use a tear away. <laughs> I'm having a hard time committing today. So I have some brown thread in my sewing machine and both the top and the bobbin. I'm gonna go grab a piece of tear away and we'll meet at the sewing machine. Okay, here we are. I have a piece of medium weight tear away stabilizer that we're gonna lay down just like this, right? And then, I'm going to bring in my towel. I'm just going to make sure that the stabilizer fits all the way around my images, right? And I can scoot it. Scoot it. <laughs> There we go. It is just big enough to fit that leaf where I put it up in that right, uh, or that left corner, right? So um, before we start stitching, I want to go ahead and choose my stitch, right? And I like to do uh, some testing of the stitch off to the side. So I'm gonna choose a zigzag stitch today. And let's just choose which stitch we're gonna use. Uh, let's start with the default, which is really big. What are we stitching first? First, we're going to stitch down the leaf and the hand, and those are pretty small stitches that we want. So let me just bring this down a little bit. Ooh, I kind of like that. Okay, so let's go with this stitch to start out with at least. And so my stitch length, or sorry, my stitch width is 1.8. That's how wide my stitch is. And my stitch length is 0.8. 
And we're going to start right here with this leaf. Let's start there today. And now we're stitching. I am, I am going to speed the stitching part up just a little bit. And uh, so you can just follow along and I'll probably skip around and do a couple of places that have the same size stitch, um, 1.8 width and 0.8 on the length before we change anything, okay? She is coming along. She's so dang cute. <laughs> but we're going to just stop right there. So I did all of the stitching that I wanted to do with that same size stitch, right? We're still on 1.8 width and 0.8 for the length. And um, I did all of the pieces that I wanted to do with that stitch. Now, ordinarily, I like to stitch down the lower layers first but I thought it would be easier for me to just stitch down all of the things with that smaller stitch that I wanted to get done and then go back and do other parts with a bigger stitch. I know I wanna increase the stitch width for her apron, her dress, and her bonnet. Now you don't have to. You could use the same stitch on everything if you wanted to, but sometimes uh, on something like this, I like to add a little bit of variety to it, right? You don't have to. You could use the same one. I do know that this is the bigger leaf, and this stitch um, might be a little bit too big for the medium sized leaf and that small leaf. And that small leaf, I'm not really looking forward to stitching it. <laughs> so if you wanted to omit the small leaf, and even the medium sized leaf and do the same size leaf. This larger leaf is the easiest one to stitch. It's time consuming though. Maybe you just wanna do the one leaf and call it done. <laughs> 
It's a little time consuming. And you see for the stem, I just went up and down that stem just a couple of times. You still see the hint of color from the fabric, but the stitches really just secure that in place forever, right? And that was a lot easier than stitching up and down the side of it, which you would lose most of that fabric stem anyway. Okay, I'm gonna increase the stitch width just a little bit. So let's start here. Yeah, I kind of like that. It's a little bit bigger than what we had been using. It's just gonna add a little bit of interest to my stitching, just a little bit bigger. So this is a 3.5 on the width and a 0.9 on the length, okay? So I'm going to start, let's start with her dress. That's the lowest layer, then we'll do her, her apron and then we will do her bonnet. I also wanted to tell you the needle that I'm using today because we have a couple layers of fabric in some places and this towel is a little bit on the thicker side. So I am using a universal needle size 9014, okay? Okay, there are all of uh, Sue Bonnet Sue's pieces are sewed down. Now, I know that this stitch is entirely way too big to stitch down these two leaves. So let's make one more adjustment. I'm going to do quite a small little zigzag stitch, <laughs> mainly for this little leaf up here. Let's see. Let's bring it down. All right, she is tiny, <laughs> that is tiny. And so uh, I think we started with this one or this one here, and you can see the difference in either one of those stitches. So it is quite small. Uh, 1.5 is the width and the length is 0.5. We're gonna just bump this up to 0.6. I'm gonna go with 0.6 for the length, okay? I don't want it quite quite so dense. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start with the leaves. Again, for the stems, I'm just going right in the middle, right over top of it, uh, just to sew that little stem down.
So there's that little leaf. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie to you. <laughs> They're a little time consuming. They're a little time consuming. Uh, lots of points and stops and turns. But isn't that well so worth it, right? So worth it. Now we're going to go ahead and stitch down the smallest one. I just want to make sure that the stabilizer is going to fit underneath this entire leaf, which it just does. <laughs> now, uh, as far as tearaway stabilizers, this is going to leave this towel nice and soft, where a cutaway would add a little bit of stiffness that would soften up through use and washing, right? Eventually, that would get softer and softer. If you used this as a hand towel to dry your hands, you'd always feel that cut away behind the applique. Um, I think the towel is going to do just fine using this tear away. And uh, I have used a piece of medium weight tear away that comes in a pre-cut sheet. And it was a hundred of them, right? Um, and the medium weight is giving me some nice support. I don't see the towel fabric pulling down into the throat plate of the sewing machine, which is lovely. Um, but yeah, I will link these sheets down in the description box. But if you don't have these sheets or a roll of tearaway, uh, and you want to use some kind of tearaway stabilizer, try using some phone book pages, some newsprint. Uh, the Dollar Tree sells pads of newsprint without any print on them. They're just plain pages. You could use coffee filters that are pressed nice and flat. Uh, but yeah, I will link these sheets. Like if you want a nice quality tearaway stabilizer that's a medium weight. Uh, and they're good size sheets. And I'll link those down in the description box. Okay, just checking to make sure everything is stitched down. It looks like we're good to go. Very time consuming, but oh, it's so worth it. I love the variation of the different size leaves. Let's come over here to the pressing board. Yeah, it is so worth it to do the three different sizes of the leaves. Uh, it just adds a little something extra to it, right? So I have a couple of threads I need to cut. So uh, I know that many are going to ask, especially with the stems of the leaves, because I just sewed a, a zigzag stitch right through the middle of those. Is that fabric going to fray? Yes. If you wash it uh, or use this, right, and you ruffle the towel a bit, the very edges of the stems will most definitely fray. And I'm okay with that. I am one who kind of loves the applique when it frays anyway. It's just kind of my look. Um, if you wanted to do the same stitch that I did like that, but you don't want it to fray, try using some fray check right on the edges, right? And actually all of this applique, because my satin or my zigzag stitch is not real, real close together. Um, it's not very dense at all. I imagine all of these pieces might fray here and there a little bit. The stitch does prevent a lot of fraying and so does the heat and bond light that I've used on the back sides of my fabric. That prevents a lot of fraying too. But it's very possible that different parts are going to fray here and there. And you could always just take your scissors and just trim those after you wash it if you don't like that look, right? But yeah, so there is... My little sunbonnet Sue. Let's flip her over. 
and we have some tear away to remove. Now, if I had done a satin stitch, removing this medium weight tear away would be so much easier because that satin stitch is really close together and it almost cuts or perforates. <laughs> I can't say that word, uh, the paper, right? And so when you're pulling away and tearing away the stabilizer after using a satin stitch, it's a lot easier. This stitch is open uh, and wider. And so um, I'm just gonna have to be a little bit more careful because if this were a lightweight tear away, it'd be easier to remove because it does have some support to it. I'm just gonna be really mindful and be very careful and support those stitches as I'm tearing things away. Actually, it's coming off a lot easier than I thought it would. <laughs> it always proves me to be a liar. <laughs> yeah, I really like this uh, tear away. I've been using it for quite some time. And I will tell you what, inside the applique, I'm just going to leave that tear away because what's going to happen is when you wash this, tear away is going to come apart anyway, right? So I'm not going to force that tear away outside of all of those little nooks and crannies and points of the leaves. When I wash it the first time, that's going to come off anyway. No sense in forcing it. I think while I'm tearing this away, I'm going to put up a picture of where this towel is going to go. I can't decide if it's going to go on my oven or if I'm going to hang it in my pantry. So wherever I decide to put it, the picture is up here and don't you think it just goes so well <laughs> with all of the other towels, right? Okay. You know what? I'm not even going to force these pieces, even though they're bigger and they would remove. I'm just going to leave that in there. Like I said, when I wash it, it'll separate and I'll be able just to pull it off easily. I'm not going to force those stitches to release that paper. So here we go. I love it. I absolutely love it. I really do. She just reminds me of my childhood so much. And uh, yeah, so cute. I mean, to make her a little bit more modern, you could do some modern looking fabrics for uh, your littles, right? Maybe you have some little girls, maybe you have some granddaughters. Um, you want the classic look of Sunbonnet Sue, but you know that they're more into like, um, Roblox and um, I was going to name off some toys, but even those are outdated because that's what my kids played with. But, you know, modernize the fabric, but still use the design and make her a little bit more hip, right? <laughs> so there you go. Sunbonnet Sue. I hope you make her. And if you do, um, I would love to see what you do with it, right? If you make it into a quilt block and put it in a table runner, a table topper, a quilt, a baby quilt, wouldn't that be so cute? Maybe you're like me and you applique it to a hand towel. Maybe you put it on a shirt or a jean jacket, no matter what. Uh, I know that myself and everybody else on Creative Crew would love to see it. And that's the easiest place to share your work, right? And uh, so there's a link for Creative Crew down in the description box. If you haven't joined yet, 
make sure to answer those two security questions. If you just jump over there and you click join and you walk away, I have to deny you. <laughs> those little two security questions are really just to filter out the fake accounts over on Facebook, right? And uh, to keep it a really uh, enjoyable place to be and a safe place to share. So yeah, uh, Sunbonnet Sue. I'm really looking forward to next week too, right? The Dresden Plate is a another classic, but we're putting the twist on it to make it super easy and I think it's going to be faster. So if a Dresden Plate has been on your like to-do plate, to-do list as far as quilting things to do, but you've been intimidated, check out next week. I think we're going to break it down and we're going to do a cheater block, okay? And it's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Um, enjoy the weather. It is cooling off and I love it. It is way less humid, but we still have a lot of bugs. Like, I don't understand the temperatures have dropped, but we still have lots of bugs and for sure lots of spiders outside. I will not walk around outside at night. They're humongous and they just pop up as soon as the sun goes down everywhere. Big, huge spiders. I guess it's the spooky season, isn't it? <laughs> okay, everybody. It's been so much fun hanging out with you today. I hope you do something creative over the weekend. I'll see you next week. Bye.